Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to go over a case of multivessel PCI in a patient with a LEDCTO and multivessel disease who was turned down for cabbage. We'll talk about how to use the modified Carlino technique. The patient is a 60-year-old man with COPD on home oxygen. He has a paroxysmal AFib and had a small stroke about two months ago uh, with no residual symptoms. He also has PAD with a bilateral lower extremity stenting. He presented to his cardiologist with an intermittent chest pressure. Uh, he was already on clopidogrel and apixaban. He was on amlodipine and lisinopril for blood pressure, and his uh, cardiologist put him on IMDR for his angina. He underwent an echo, which showed an EF of 40 to 45 percent, uh, with a global hypokinesis. Nuclear stress testing uh, showed only mild anterior ischemia. However, uh, there was transient ischemic dilatation and marked uh, infralateral ST depressions, all uh, concerning for possibly multivessel disease. So he was uh, therefore referred for a cath, and you see the uh, left coronary circulation here. So what we see is a severe uh, diffuse uh, coronary disease. Um, the uh, LED has a severe osteal disease and a, a CTO approximately. The circumflex has severe mid and distal disease and the ramus is a, a fairly large vessel uh, with a moderate to severe proximal disease. Um, here's the LED again. Uh, it uh, fills via uh, left to left collaterals. There might be faint bridging collaterals as well. Um, the CTO looks to be over 20 millimeters long, uh, and it has a blunt stump uh, with a, a diagonal branch arising at the stump. It also looks like uh, there is going to be a 90 degree turn at the occlusion uh, to get to the remainder of the LED. Uh, these factors all uh, possibly could increase the uh, difficulty of successfully crossing uh, the CTO. And here's the RCA. Uh, it is a small, tortuous, with a severe uh, diffuse disease. Uh, they are right to left collaterals to the LED, but they are small, they're also tortuous, and they also all look to be epicardial, uh, not uh, particularly attractive uh, for uh, wiring. So we got a cardiac MRI, which uh, showed anterior wall viability and referred the patient uh, for a cabbage. However, uh, the patient was eventually turned down uh, by the cardiac surgeons uh, due to his multiple comorbidities. So uh, what would you do now? Uh, would you just do medical therapy? Uh, would you refer for an attempt at multivessel PCI? And if you're going to do PCI, which vessels are you going to fix? All of them or just the circumflex and ramus and manage the LADCTO and the RCA medically? And with his uh, depressed EF, uh, uh, should we use Impella or a balloon pump if we're going to go for PCI? So um, after some discussions, uh, we uh, decided to proceed with an attempt at multivessel PCI. The patient was still fairly young, and he had persistent angina on uh, two antianginal medications. Uh, his EF was depressed, and the anterior wall was uh, viable. So here's our plan. Uh, we're going to leave the RCA alone. It's uh, small and torturous, and we thought it was best uh, treated medically. We're going to stent the circumflex and gel uh, that OM. Uh, we're going to uh, FFR the ramus and uh, stent it if positive. And with the anterior wall viable, uh, we're going to go after the CTO of the LED. And here's our plan for the CTO. Uh, we're going to start with uh, anti-grade wire escalation. Uh, with very few exceptions, I always start uh, with anti-grade wiring, and more often than not, uh, you're going to cross. Uh, if we do end up dissecting, and then the bailout will be anti-grade dissection reentry. Um, the RCA collaterals were very small, torturous, and epicardial, all red flags. Uh, so we didn't think that the retrograde approach was really going to be feasible here. Uh, we did not think that we needed Impella. Uh, he was a hemodynamically stable, and his LV dysfunction uh, was not uh, particularly severe. So here we go. Uh, the circumflex went first, and as predicted, uh, it was straightforward. Uh, balloon, stent, balloon. So after a 225 by 33 millimeter DES, uh, here is the angiographic result in the circumflex. Uh, the OM was jailed, uh, but uh, remained angiographically unchanged. Next, uh, following our plan, uh, we did FFR on the ramus. Uh, the FFR was 0 0.74, uh, so uh, we decided with, uh, uh, to go ahead and stent it. 
So PC of the Remus was also straightforward, another balloon stent balloon affair. So uh, after a 275 by 28 millimeter DES in the Ramus and post dilation with a 3.0 millimeter NC balloon, uh, here is the result in the Ramus, which was also quite uh, satisfactory. All right, so now onto the main course, uh, the LED. Uh, our plan called for anti-grade uh, wire escalation. Uh, we used a pro water wire to get a turnpike microcatheter to the CTO. At that point, thinking or hoping uh, that there might be a microchannel, uh, we first used a Fielder XT wire uh, to probe the CTO, uh, but uh, without success. Uh, we moved up to a Pilot 50, uh, which was uh, similarly unsuccessful. A heavier Pilot 200 wire couldn't cross either, uh, although it did penetrate the proximal cap and entered perhaps halfway into the occlusion. So what do we do now? Uh, should we go to the section re-entry? Uh, should we switch to a Gladius Mongo and maybe knuckle around the CTO and re-enter? So that was the plan, uh, but I actually decided to try the modified Carlino technique first. Um, for anti-grid wire escalation, uh, when you have the wire partially across, this technique can help you decide what to do next and sometimes uh, can even help uh, create a channel. So in the modified Carlino technique, uh, you gently inject a small amount of contrast, usually around one mil, uh, into a microcatheter wedged into the CTO. Uh, don't inject a lot and don't use a lot of force. Uh, that was the original Carlino technique, uh, which had a higher risk of perforation. Um, there are four possible outcomes, and the first is shown here, uh, a tubular dissection. If you see this, uh, then you know that your wire is in a dissection plane. Your options at this point would be to reach for a parallel wire or move on to uh, re-entry techniques, for example, with a, a stingray balloon. The second possible outcome is this uh, storm cloud appearance. And if you see this, then your wire is probably in a small side branch. What you, do, what you need to do at this point is to use a parallel wire uh, to get into the main branch. And for parallel wiring, I like the Gaia second or third wires, uh, which have one-to-one -one torque control and are more maneuverable. They are also stiffer, and in general, the parallel wire uh, should be stiffer uh, than your first wire. Uh, the third possible outcome is this patchy appearance. Uh, if you see this, uh, then you are in the main CTO vessel, but in a segment uh, with fibrous tissue intermixed with tough calcified islands. Your options here are either to use heavier wires to get through the calcified islands, but at the risk of perforation, or uh, go to uh, the section re-entry. And finally, uh, the fourth possible outcome is what happened to us. Uh, the injection can actually create a microchannel that crosses the CTO. And here you see the microchannel in our case. Um, we had backed out our turnpike microcatheter after the contrast injection uh, to be able to see the channel. So uh, here is another view of the microchannel. Uh, this was uh, certainly a very nice outcome. So uh, we went ahead and gently wired the LED with a Pilot 200 wire using a turnpike microcatheter and exchanged the wire to a wiggle wire for uh, better support. We then dilated the LED with a 3.0 balloon, stented with a 3.5 by 28 millimeter DES, and post dilated with a 3.75 balloon. And um, here we are after LED PCI. Uh, the proximal to mid LED looks great, uh, but uh, what are we going to do about that osteum? Well, uh, we uh, decided to fix it. Uh, we stented the osteum with a 4.0 by 15 millimeter DES and post dilated with a 4.0 uh, NC balloon. Now, there are several techniques uh, that you could use to nail the LED osteum. The simplest one is probably the guideline or assisted technique, but you'll generally need a, a seven French or larger guideliner for this. It's very similar to the floating wire technique for uh, aorto osteolesions, and I have another video showing you how to do this. But in this case, uh, the floating wire is in the cirque, and uh, with wires both in the LED and the cirque, uh, you advance your guideliner until it, it is mechanically wedged at the LED uh, circumflex bifurcation by the two wires. Once, th once that happens, all you have to do now is place the dot of your stent at the tip of the guideliner and you've nailed the osteum. 
A second technique is the Zabu technique, which I only recommend for a relatively simple non-calcified lesions, otherwise you risk stent loss. Uh, if there is interest, uh, I'll do a video about this technique in the future. And third, uh, there is of course eyeballing, uh, which is the most common technique, and that's what uh, we used here. All right, so here we are after LED PCI, uh, things uh, looking pretty good. And here is the final angiographic result, which turned out to be quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient did very well. Um, at the uh, three-month follow-up, his angina was completely resolved. His IMDR was stopped. And on repeat echo, uh, his EF had increased to 55%. All right, take-home messages. Um, I suppose the main message here is that for complex cases, especially CTO, it is often best not to do ad hoc PCI. Taking the patient off the table and coming up with a plan A, plan B, or even a plan C uh, can be very useful. Uh, we went over modified Carlino, a nice technique to remember for anti-grade CTO cases. It's considered a bailout technique, uh, but uh, can give a lot of information about where you are and what to do next. And occasionally, it can even open up a channel for you. Thank you for watching.